Zip Devils. Jade on back to answer more goddamn questions. Questions we got. First two order questions. Then next video online. Business as usual, goddammit. First goddamn order question from Chris Exner. Great interview with Corpse Grinder. Sure was, bra bra. I, ha I have to say so myself. It's funny, too, because uh, after the interview, I literally talked to George for probably about another two hours. Just under two hours. Yeah, it was all during incantation set I missed, and I missed the entire Exciter set yet again. First time I missed Exciter was whatever year they played uh, Maryland Death Fest, 2016, 15, something around there, when it was the original lineup. And that was one of the bands I wanted to see. And I was hanging out talking to Matt Harvey the whole time. So, you know, sometimes you're shooting the shit and you just miss, you know, it happens, right? But this time, I mean, I'm not going to cut off the fucking grinder, right? So, missed Incan and uh, and all of Exciter. Then it was setting up, I think, Possessed was next. And I did get to watch a few songs of them. But, yeah, easily two hours. And he was definitely, uh, dude, he's a talkative fucking guy. And it was fucking hilarious. Like, he was literally talking about shit that I'm not going to repeat off camera. Because you can tell it's stuff that he doesn't want locally out there. Like, stuff... Some stuff that I would have wanted to ask in, a, in the interview, but I wouldn't because I'm not going to throw one on the fucking bus. Um, and it's funny because, like, while we were talking and shit, there was, like, one or two other people standing off to the side listening. And there was this kid. He uh, pulled out his phone. He started recording. He's like, turn that phone off, man. This is it. This is in, This is inside information. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, so I'm good for watching that shit. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to repeat any stuff that he said. I mean, nothing, like, crazy, but just, like. And people are like, oh, what a fucking rock star. See, he's fake on camera. He's like, what do you think I got to do, guys? I don't sit there and tell you fucking everything. Like, there's inside business shit that I can't repeat, whether it be deals or stuff that's happened with bands. I'm not going to repeat. Or they said, you know what I mean? Things you just, you know, obvious stuff. You're just not going to fucking repeat out to the goddamn public. Um, not that it's it's bad or anything like that. It's just like, for example, like, yeah, what was uh, Midnight offered to go to Metal Blade? I mean, I know what it is. I'm not going to fucking put that on the public. It's nobody's goddamn fucking business. That's up for him to uh, put out there. Things like that. That's what I'm saying. So but he's in the same boat. And obviously him being more of a public figurehead, he's going to have more things that he's got to, you know, not say on fucking camera to ruffle some goddamn feathers because, like the old saying, that's another thing too. Some stuff I don't say about certain bands or whatever, I'll keep on the DL, whether I, there's inside stories or heard. It's like, don't shit where you fucking eat. Either maybe we, it could be bands we work with or whatever. It's like, I'm not going to sit there and throw out personal goddamn information. Not to mention, ever since all this stupid, stupid ass fucking uh, social media and shit, all this personal information and drama shit that comes out about people, it shouldn't even come out. It's fucking dumb. It's got nothing to do with anything. Do you like the band or don't you? I mean, what the fuck? This isn't goddamn Brad Pitt fucking Hollywood. And even then, I don't give a shit what the fuck the guy does his own goddamn time. It's technically nobody's fucking business. So, I yeah, I never followed any of that gir girl shit anyways. But that is what gets hits. That's what gets clicks. So, yeah, if I just wanted to be a complete fucking dick... I could spill the beans on a lot of stuff, just talking about shit. But number one, that's a dick move. Number two, like I said, don't shit where you fucking eat. Number three, that's that's the fucking bitches, bro, bro. That's the fucking real man. Don't talk about that kind of shit. Anyways, goddamn it, Chris Eggner. Oh yes, yeah, great. Yeah, if you got any stickers or CDs or free devil stuff to throw, throw in. Yeah, see, we got left. It's getting uh, slim pickings around here, and we need to do a re another repress on comps. We got a few left, but uh, we sent. Uh, most of them over to uh, Milwaukee because we've been in there. With the, he's doing the Jasta. Jamie says he's giving out. Uh, he sent it up with Eric. Well, actually, he emailed me, and um, so this will be out. This video should be out before you leave from Milwaukee. He emailed me inviting uh, Hell's Headbangers out to uh, Ven at Milwaukee, and I just kind of asked the fucking details, you know, that we don't need for vending. And uh, I said, like, oh, "Okay, cool." Looked it up the driving time. It's cool. Well, that's you could do that. And then I just asked as long as Eric, because Eric does the majority of the work, um, I just kind of fucking show up and shake hands and hang out with all you guys and help where needed, right? But he does the bulk of the fucking work. Then Lindsay will be there too. But Josta asked, uh, want to come out? Then he's doing some giveaway gift bags. So we sent him uh, most of our comps that were left. Maybe 800 or something. I think we sent him 800. 600, 800? Something like that. Um, but could be kept like only 100 left for ourselves. So... I think we're doing another repress, but then stickers were running low on too, so I'll see what it tossed in there for you. And Deicide stickers, it's funny because the uh, Deicide uh, stickers that uh, uh, if you don't like De if you don't like Deicide, you don't like Death Metal stickers, the slogan stickers for the from the channel. I've been on those for a while, and I did say it on the channel, but ever since uh, ran out, it seems like every day now that people ask because there was like when I first showed it, people were asking every day, "Hey, throw one of those in." But there was like a week or ten days where a drought where no one was saying in the special instructions. But <laughs> now that I'm out, that's the way it always fucking goes. 
Uh, it's someone's asking like every fucking day. So if you see this guy in video, the reason not in there is because I didn't ignore you. It's because you know, we were out. So, um, but yeah, looking like we're going to be at uh, Milwaukee. And uh, Josh, the city's going to be doing a po- bunch of podcasts there. I think he said mini ones, like 20 minutes. I was like, so I'll, I'll come on on. He's like, absolutely. I'll have you on. Now, again, it, it, it's a, a resident. He sounds like a very solid guy. He replies fucking very quickly. Um, no wonder he's successful. You can just tell that he's uh, he's got his head on straight and fucking good business, man. Um, I, I can I can sense that shit a mile away. Just cause I'm, I, can, I can smell a fucking knob and I can smell a guy that guy. Okay, this guy means business. Um, been there, done that. So I know and I can tell. I definitely get a good vibe with him. But uh, my life motto still is kind of like, I'll call you back. I'll believe it when I see it. So he did invite me on. Again, I'll believe it when I see it uh, because I'm sure it's going to be hectic as fuck. Um, so I need a date and time. Like, well, like, where's it at, man? I need an exact time. Um, but yeah, I'm 100% going on some. Maybe you'll see the goddamn dog on the fucking uh, on the Josta podcast. What are we going to talk about? I don't know. Uh, he'll Maybe he'll ask me questions. I'll be asking him questions. See how most of my interviews are on the Corpse Grinder one. That was the only one that was thought out. So I don't think it's something to talk about, goddammit. But nonetheless, fuck yeah, I'll go on it. He's got a bigger platform than me. So why the fuck wouldn't I? Anyways, you're not even getting this goddamn guy's questions. Question from that. Question from that shit stir wicked devil. So are you saying you're a wicked devil? Yeah, the wicked devil. I recognize that user ID YouTube. But uh, is that you then, Chris? Or you're saying you're responding to him? So let's see what he has to say. I'm not even sure. Uh, King Devil, Lord of the Pummeled can- Canoe. What was the most recent extreme metal album you heard where you were like, wow, this is a classic release? For this band and the genre. Devil's going to love this for 100 years or more. If you want to find me in hell, I'll be headbanging that at the Pink Panty Bonfire. See you there. So is this, so you are, are you Wicked Devil then, Chris? Clarify that. I'm not sure when you said question from that shitster, Wicked Devil. That I don't get. I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to yourself. Uh, I don't remember any shit stirring. Um, seems like distributed call points, he sometimes kind of starts, tries to stir a little bit of shit. Um, who's that buffoon black metal guy that, uh, uh, Lord, Lord, something stupid. Uh, but he's always busting the balls about the Damien Borges and crap like that. He hasn't commented in a while. Uh, there's a person saying how how often they take dumps. There's the Terry, uh, the, the Teradat, the the fucking dinosaur sounding fucking name. She's always he, she, or whatever the fuck it is. It's always saying stupid shit. But I don't call Wicked Devil anything saying anything fucking stupid. Uh, extreme metal album. I heard that. I think that'll be a classic. I know exactly what you mean. That's gonna be. Kind of like fucking DSI, DSI, or, you know, Cannibal Corpse, Tomb of Mutilated. They're classics forever. Tomb, Left Hand Path. Those are going to be literally listened to in, in 100 years from now. Those are cemented in fucking history. Um, in the recent years, it's in the extreme metal genre. Honestly, I said it when it came out. I, I, I said it once it came out, and I could tell how it was moving, and especially when I saw him live, is um, Spider. I said that when that album came out. The image was fucking awesome. Their live performance was fucking awesome. The mix of the music was black, thrash, and punk, so it hits three subgenres. Um, I said when that came out, and I could tell I was moving, I was like, I would not, not saying it will. It could be a complete fucking flop, and I could be wrong. But if I had to guess, I was like, I would not be surprised if this band was to blow up to the size of like a midnight. Again, I'm not saying they're going to. I'm just saying if it happened, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, again, they have the image, everything. Um, it's a little bit easier to get into as opposed to like something like Incantation or Mortician, Immolation, those bands, they're much, much more limited to how far they can go because that brutal dark stuff is, is, um, you're, it's only going to appeal to so many people. You know what I mean? Basically, if you're into fucking brutal death metal, dark and death metal, then you're going to like it. If you're not, then you're not. You see what I'm saying? So that's why Midnight, too, that's part of the reason I wasn't shocked when it blew up. Thrashers can like it. Heavy metalists can like it. 80s guys can fucking like it. If you like black metal, well, yeah, I like black metal. I really love Venom. It hits boxes. So that wasn't a surprise. It's it's a, a, a band that could cross over. And usually if a guy does like death metal, grindcore, stuff like that, he usually likes other stuff in subgenres and thrash and stuff like that. So they can get into it. So it can hit every single genre. Again, Mortician, no. It's either you like brutal shit or you don't. You know what I mean? If you're an 80s guy only, nothing good after 89, like you know who, you're not going to like the fucking Tish. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So, with well, Spider, I can see that. I mean, again, uh, that, that's my goddamn pick. I mean, I'll be listening to the day I die. I thought it was fucking fantastic. 
Now, if they go massively shitty and stuff, album's on. I can't vouch for fucking that. Uh, I don't get the vibe that they would, you know, talking to the guys and shit like that and uh, things of that nature. But it'll be the first album, I think, will, or at least in my book is. Michael H Hedrick, I've got two questions and one comment for you, J-Dog. So what I'm here for, bro town. One, do you think Mortician will ever record another album? 50-50 chance, but if I had to say, I would say, yeah, I would think so more. Because they know it's worth money, too. I've offered, now granted, I can't remember if I made an offer, but I'm sure Chase probably did, too. And I've actually crossed my mind recently of throwing out an offer that I have in mind. Again, shit like this that I have in mind, I have a number in my mind. I'm not going to say that publicly. I'm not going to come on the channel and say that stuff. That's nobody's business. Stuff like that. Yeah, I'm honest, and I, I'm, I'm as open as I can be on this channel. But there's certain shows, no, I'm not going to talk about this being the kahuna, <laughs> King Kahuna, stuff like this. I have a number in my mind where it's like, hey, probably contact, you know, send a uh, big Willie a message and be like, we want to do the new album. Can we get it out? CDLP, I'll offer you this deal. It literally fucking, it's funny because you, you bring this question up. You know, just as you, you know, I'm always brainstorming ideas. You know how all the people, most people, they're they're they're, they're sitting there thinking about, oh, is Trump being reelected? Uh, what's going on? COVID shots. What's going on? The dog's mind is business ideas. Fucking stern, making a, uh, uh, creating stuff. You know, doing something productive with my life. I'm not worrying about bitch drama shit. You know what I mean? Or so and so said this about your dog. I don't give a fuck. Say whatever the fuck you want. You can literally say whatever you want about me. I know it's true if it's not true, and I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. So, yeah. But I laugh my ass off when most people are like, you know, did you hear that Shally shed this? And they're on the phone talking. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. What are you guys are fucking miserable? Why am I, like I said, but the other day, just just in my thoughts, I'm sitting there stewing about the new Tish album. Man, what would it take to get out? Because think about it. Everything is for sale. My house is for sale right now. My whole record collection is for sale. What do you mean, j Dog's for sale? If somebody comes up and says, hey, j Dog, for your whole record collection, I'm going to give you $10 million. Am I going to say no? Well, yeah, fuck yeah. You can take it all. Because I can easily fucking tell me it's not worth $10 million. And I can easily go rebuy everything for less than a million. So it's for sale. So technically, the new Tish, if Hells wants to do it, it's for sale. Let's say again, we offer more Tish. A million dollars. We want to do CDLP, all the merch. They're not going to say no. They're like, oh, fuck yeah. We'll record it this week. So there is a number. What that is, I don't know. Uh, but it's got to be, you know, profitable for us too. But uh, so I have a number. That's what I was stirring my mind. I was like, you know what? So that's that's what I'm thinking about. That stupid ass fucking elections and shit coming. That was weeks of time shit to think about. Thinking, yeah. So man, I think I'm gonna shoot shoot a Chasey boy this fucking email. Got this idea. See what he thinks. Brew it over, and uh, I think he might agree with the uh, deal too. But I can see him be like, yeah, we're probably not gonna go for this. Um. But if that's the case and they get off offered, then I think that'd get them up off the couch because Roger told me point blank. He says it's all completely written. All the songs are written. He's like, he just needs a uh, will to do lyrics. That was in uh, the September show. So, and I am going to try to, uh, Roger, I never really talked to three mail. I mean, I have way back in the day, but will he, um, I do email him uh, every now and again. Last time I emailed him was a couple months ago. We're, we're doing the uh, 1989 demo also known as the Brutally Mutilated 7-inch, uh, on a 12-inch picture disc. Will's been wanting that out on a 12-inch picture disc for quite a while now. He wanted us to do it officially. Anyways, the whole layout was my idea and shit like that, and I, I was uh, corresponding with our uh, layoutists and uh, Will, and I'll send it back. So long story short, Will uh, replies back really quickly to me. He knows exactly who I am, et cetera, and replies, and he loved love to the layout. Anyways, Morticians playing here again. In uh, September, it finally just got announced. I heard through the uh, windmill that it was coming out, and uh, then it wasn't announced. I was like, and I asked Emma at No Class, who's a friend of mine, I was, I was like, yeah, is that going on? I was like, I don't remember who told me. I was like, maybe it was Don. I was like, but I don't see any flyers or anything for it. She said, oh, well, it's technically not announced yet. And then literally like the week after, it got announced. I was like, okay. So I'm just trying to confirm. So it is announced, and it's happening. And uh, anyways, I'm going to email Will. I don't know if before or after Milwaukee, we'll see, but way before the show in advance. I want to get an interview with him for the goddamn channel. You, I, I can't find any Romer fucking interviews anywhere on YouTube, and I've been a fan of the band since I was goddamn 13 years old. Um, so I would love to get that. I think that'd be fucking cool. Interviewing Roger would be cool, but I'd rather get Will, because all the mortician interviews you look up on YouTube, they're all with Roger. There's none with Will, and Will technically created the band. So I would like to um, get one. Now, he might say no, 
but I'm going to ask him to, you know, trying to, uh, try to talk him to do it. You know what I mean? But I think, uh, uh, to answer your question, I would say 60% chance Mortician will, because they, with their popularity too, they know that's got value. They know it's going to sell a shitload. So, now what's the holdup? I don't know. I mean, well, I know what they're waiting on, but why it's taking so long, I have no fucking clue. Been a long time since Reanimated Dead Flesh was released. Got that right, goddammit. Number two, do you have any favorite female vocalists, any genre? Uh, I really like the original Sin album. I don't know what the chick's fucking name is in the goddamn thing, but that's probably my fe favorite female-fronted band. Um, I like Savage Master a lot. Stacy, I think, is good. Uh, I like Lady Beast. That's a current band. I liked uh, the Vicious Blade stuff. I don't own anything by Vicious Blade because I think they just have awesome cassettes. But I like them. They're, they're uh, really cool chicks. They come up here. I, I mean, I only, I've talked to, I think, all of them, but the main one is the uh, uh, Clarissa. She comes up to uh, the Ohio shows every now and again. So the main people from that PA, the chicks that come up and that I know from, I mean, I, I don't want to know them, but I kind of know them. They know who I am. I know who they are, but I mean, we're not mailing each other Christmas cards. Uh, is Deborah from Lady Beast and uh, Clarissa. I think they come up together. Now, I met the other chicks too, uh, but I don't like, I know them way less. I've talked to them less. So I like that. I think all that stuff's good. Uh, but the Vicious Blade, uh, I only I only YouTube because, I, like I said, I think they only have cassettes. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and there's Castrator, that's good too. That's with uh, Clarissa as well, and uh, I think a couple of the other same members. But like I said, I only mainly know her. So the others, um, it's why you know you get the faces mixed up. You met, but you can't remember. But they seem to come up to the shows like they were at Bulldozer and uh, Clarissa was at Metal. I mean, uh, the North Carolina Chainsaw Fest. They've been at other shows. And then Deborah comes up pretty often too. And then I've seen Lady Beast several times. I like those. I liked uh, Rachel's vocals on the Sinister Creative Killings. The second album, I liked their vocals, but I just thought the uh, album was a little bit boring. I got to go back and revisit it. I actually got, got rid of it years ago because so I remember not even liking it. But the one, but I do like Creative Killings. That's the first one. That was Rachel. Um, I know she sang for the Occult too, which was, I thought it was a pretty decent death thrash. Um,. Who the fuck am I forgetting? Um, and as far as favorites, I mean, that's, yeah, that's... I know there's somebody I'm probably completely forgetting that I really like, too. Uh, but I don't like a ton of female front and shit. Oh, I like the uh, Blood Star. That was good. The album, I thought, was eh, pretty decent. But I, I really like the 7-inch. The Fear 7-inch. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that 7-inch on, on Shadow Kingdom Records. Uh, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? Oh, Detente, the, the debuted album. When they got the new chick singer, I'm like, eh, I didn't really like it. But the uh, Detente uh, debuted album, that's fucking great. I think somebody, any of those would probably be in my, my favorites. Those are the ones I like. Because I said, like I said, as far as female front of bands, I don't like a ton. I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but um, primarily those ones. God damn it, I don't think we're going to get the next goddamn video. Like, well, damn, shit, I mean, fucking, this was like five questions in one. These two other questions. Number three from Michael as well. KK Warslut seems like the type of guy that would punch you in the face if you asked him a stupid question. <laughs> like, what's heavier than the man tip? <laughs> you know, it's funny is um, KK is definitely one of my uh, top, top guys I would love to interview as well on the channel. One, being a huge Destroyer 666 fan. Two, I don't really know anything about him personally that much. Um, but comes off as just kind of like, just, a, he just looks very, very fucking metal. Now, is he, I don't know. He could be, uh, that could be just all for fucking show, all show, no go, right? I, no, I don't think that's the case, but, uh, it's possible, right? I don't, I, cause I've never even seen an interview with him. I'm sure there's some on YouTube, but I've never, I just one of those things I never searched for. I, so I don't even know what the guy's fucking voice sounds like other than vocals. Um, don't really know anything about him. Doesn't he live in the Netherlands now? I know he was originally from Australia. Moved to the Netherlands? Is he still there? I think maybe he moved somewhere else. What that? Like, I'd ask a question about that. Like, what's that all about? Because I'm generally curious. I don't know what the fucking answer is. Um, I have heard stories from two to three people about KK that, mm, again, I don't know how, what I want to say on the channel. And again, again, I don't even know if it's fucking true because well, I've never met him firsthand. Stuff that, like, we're like, ah, J Dog might not like him. That type of stuff on a personal level. I don't know it's true. I don't know it's not. He may be the coolest fucking guy in the world, but uh, and I'm not going to say who said it either, but people that have met him, they said X, Y, and Z, and I guess the best way to describe it, 
uh, yeah, without going into detail, is if someone kind of said one of the opinions was was he's way more standoffish than I thought he was going to fucking be. I've heard that. But then again, one of the others, I heard he was overly talkative. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, but again, I can't confirm that. I have no idea. That's just what I've heard. That's the only kind of in-person shit I know. But nonetheless, I'm a huge D666 fan, and I would love to interview KK. And I think that's on a... Uh, I think that's realistic. Now, do I, do I, is he over my bucket list over Glenn Benton? No, but he's up there. I would say KK is definitely my top 10 of people I would love to get on the channel. Kind of a dream come true moments. Fuck, I mean, if Hells ever does another fest or something like that, I, I don't see why, why K, uh, Destroyer 666 would be out of the realm of possibility to get. Uh, maybe Chase or Eric knows something I don't. I mean, they have played the States. They've never been to Cleveland, Ohio, ever. And if they have, I don't know where the fuck my ass was. I didn't. I didn't even hear about it even post. So very likely it's it's been never. Because yeah, I would have heard something. But I know they played the fucking states, but I've never got a chance to see them. So it's not like they can't get in the country, or at least they, they were able to at one fucking point. They do shows. You know what I mean? I saw that live show. What was a few years ago? That was in Russia. That sounds really fucking good. There's the, the live recording of whole goddamn show. That was cool as fuck. Um, they looked awesome live. But yeah, I mean, he looks like, when I think of metal and shit like that, that's when I was talking about that Revolver channel. When I think of someone like K.K. Warsaw, I was like, that's fucking metal. This at least looks metal. You, you Exactly. You, would, you wouldn't even like think to ask, is this guy fucking, yeah, what's heavier than Pantera, bro? you like Static X, dude. What about Cold Chamber? Exactly. Image-wise, whether he would or wouldn't, he likes it, you would just assume he gives that look, you just punch him in the fucking face. But when I say it on this goddamn channel, and it's got to be because, you know, this is open. It's on YouTube. It's open to anyone. A fucking five-year-old can watch this if they, if they stumble across it, right? It's got to be the Cold Chamber guy who's completely out of the fucking loop. Or the Death Corps guys. Whatever the fucking equivalent of today is. They're completely out of the loop. Like, literally having heard deceased. They're like, what is he talking about? So there's, like, different stuff you can't listen to. And just, just stupid shit where it's like, dude, I'm not your fucking daddy. and here to explain to you how the goddamn scene works. And, and the way a lot of these guys fucking think and just 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 come and fucking send shit. You know what I mean? It's, but it's they come over here and they come and it's just it's so goddamn fucking laughable and funny. I'm just like, dude, I, I mean, you're unless you're in the know, kind of just don't even comment because you're just embarrassing yourself. But some of the comments I see, but some of the guys come in to reply, I'm attacked. I'm like, dude, is this jo question a joke? Like, who is the one guy in the corpse grinder interview? Like. What did he say? You should be interviewing Chelsea Grin or something. That's better than can you just you could tell his sideways cap and his fucking photo practically. At least he looked like the type. And you're just like, oh God, I can already tell. This guy's never heard the Necrovore demo. Like I, I don't even need to meet him to ask. Either that or he's just completely fucking with me to be funny. It's one of the others. But I know some comes in, dude, is this are you fucking serious? Like people are laughing. I'm like, it, Exactly. But again, a corpse grinder interview, it's going to probably, it's going to attract some of those people. That's the most, that's the heaviest and most underground thing they know is cannibal. You're definitely out of the fucking loop if it is. So it's, you got to kind of expect it. Granted, I kind of like those comments because goddamn, they sure do make me fucking laugh. And uh, nothing else. Running out of goddamn material, just fucking have a field day on their ass because, well, it doesn't kind of like the videos like the Revolver review. That was a hit. That got more than the average views. I got over the 2K mark, and most videos hover around the 1.4, 1.5K mark in the first 24 hours. That was over 2K in 24 hours. So people might to find that shit funny. So load the stupid comments in there. That's fine. It gives me more goddamn material. So don't fuck about me the slightest bit. Comments, what's concerned you? Know what's going on? 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 What's